Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India And here we are with the 17th lecture of the course Fracture, Fatigue and Failure of Materials. And in this lecture, we are going to start another new concept, new topic which is on impact toughness. So let us see what will be covered in this lecture today. So we will be talking about impact test and what is the necessity for that, why do we need to know the impact toughness of a material, the practical significance. And of course, that will be also associated with the different types of testing that are done to find out the impact toughness of a material. And uh, most likely, we will be talking about the Sharpie impact test, which is the most common and most widely used impact toughness testing. And from there, we will lead to the concept of ductile to brittle transition and the temperature associated with that. So, let us uh, start with why the, the impact toughness uh, characterization has become very important. It dated long back more than a century back uh, during the time of the second world war when there was a lot of failure events that people have noticed. So, uh, there were this liberty ships which were built during this period uh, of early 1940s and so. And the, the main purpose of this kind of ships are for the transportation. So, during this period of around uh, say 1939 to 45, over this period of time, more than 2700 of uh, Liberty ships are been built. So, let me just uh, state these facts a little bit. Over this period of 6 years, almost uh, more than 2700 Liberty ships were built and uh, there were of course different sources specifies this number a little bit uh, in a different way. But more or less there was a huge number of ships that ha has been built over this period. So, um, it is obvious that much of the manufacturing has been done in a hurried way in, in a uh, uh, way that they can complete their assignment, their job, the ships will be functioning soon. So, that was one of the fact that later on people came to know uh, that could be related to their failure incident. So, out of uh, this 2700 uh, or more than that ships, there was a failure incident of more than 1000 ships. So, to be specific, more than 1000 ships got failed or damaged or uh, showed significant amount of defect that they has been uh, retired from their service. And most importantly, there were few incidents that showed that the ships actually cracked into two. So, here is an example of one. Uh, if you can see that uh, the ship has been actually fractured right from the middle and teared into two completely different parts. So, this has actually shook the nation. Uh, all these incidents and particularly if uh, a ship or such a giant structure can tear up into two just like a toy, uh, that is something of concern and people did a lot of investigation, a lot of failure analysis has been done to find out the real reason for this and uh, understanding has been developed about the metallurgical concepts that leads to fracture. Okay, particularly it has been uh, considered that much of this failure originated from the weld joint that has been used in the ships uh, particularly to save time. So, instead of the riveted joint in this ship much of the weld joints has been used and that leads to some of the defects, the welding defects that could lead to stress concentration. I am bringing up this term because uh, you are already familiar with this terms and now how this has practically uh, 
led to failure and how that has impacted the overall fracture mechanics that is something very interesting. So, all this stress concentration and the associated uh, fracture has been noted particularly during the time of winter. So, majority of this failure actually happened even when the ship is not uh, on, on the working status or it is just in the dock, there also it just suddenly fractured and particularly in the winter season when the water is chilled. So, that also uh, give the idea that something is happening might be that is related to the temperature and that led to this uh, concept of uh, impact testing. Most importantly, what people have understood from there is uh, that the shipbuilding steel that has been used of course had uh, not very poor toughness, but uh, quite okay that is supposed to work in that, but due to some external factors fracture has actually happened. So, uh, scientists and uh, the people working on the area of fracture mechanics understood the concept or the importance of the external factors or the service conditions, experimental uh, factors, parameters that could lead to failure apart from the materials property itself. So, actually uh, for that matter if we think uh, that we always try to enhance the strength of a material, we look for stronger and stronger material. But by whatever way any of the metallurgical strengthening mechanism that we use for increasing the yield strength, uh, for example, by having some kind of inclusions or precipitates that uh, with the second phase uh, that has a higher hardness, higher uh, strength, so that we can get an overall enhancement in the yield strength of the material. All such kind of strengthening mechanism actually suppress the plastic deformation. So, any kind of strengthening or uh, strengthening uh, particularly of the yield strength, uh, any kind of enhancement in the yield strength is associated with retardation in the overall ductility or the plastic deformation. And as we have seen from the plane strain and plane stress concept so far that more is the plasticity as we have uh, we noticed this in case of the plane stress condition when the plastic zone is significant that actually retards the growth of the crack and that uses up some of the energy whatever applied energy is uh, available that is partly being used up for this plastic deformation and as a result more and more energy is required for the fracture to materialize. So, that is uh, actually in a sense good way of increasing the toughness of the material. So, strength and toughness particularly yield strength and toughness are mostly inversely related. That, uh, so, any enhancement in the yield strength delays or uh, the, the stress relaxation is being limited in case there is a plastic deformation. Okay. So, uh, with that we came to the uh, concept that any kind of external factors uh, other than the uh, metallurgical way itself, if we are using some kind of notch, we have also seen that particularly for ductile material this presence of the notch can lead to notch strengthening. In case of brittle material, we see the weakening as expected, but for the case of ductile material because of the stress triaxiality at the notch tip that leads to a notch strengthening. So, now if we uh, think about the importance of the notch, we uh, see that longer is the notch for example if we are increasing the notch size or uh, the A. So, longer is the notch that will lead to a reduction in the ductility in the material. So, that essentially uh, reduces the fracture toughness of the material. So, fracture toughness reduces. On the other hand, if we are talking about the temperature now, temperature is inversely proportional to the yield strength. Uh, more is the temperature, more ductile the material is means the yield strength is reducing. So, that in a sense uh, we can say that if we are reducing the temperature or in most cases if the service temperature is uh, much low then the strength of the material increases because there is not enough plastic deformation and that means that more and more energy needs to be supplied to have the material yield. So, if we can simply draw 
the stress versus strain curve. Let us say this is for a regular material and in case we are seeing any of this condition, there will be enhancement in the yield strength, but there is at the same time reduction in the total elongation to failure or uh, the ductility or overall there will be a reduction in the toughness. Okay. So, what we, as, uh, what we have seen so far is as the uh, notch severity like the length of the uh, notch or the sharpness uh, of the notch tip reduces uh, under such circumstances there will be an enhancement in the yield strength part. Also, we have seen that if we are decreasing the temperature, let us use the symbol T for temperature. So, if the temperature is being decreased, that also leads to an enhancement in the yield strength. The other important factor is the strain rate, the deformation rate. So, if we are uh, applying a very high strain rate, then the yield strength is also increasing. Okay. So, yield strength is directly proportional to the strain rate, higher is the strain rate more uh, will be the yield strength of the material. Okay. So, there also we are seeing an effect in the stress strain curve. Okay. So, these are the three factors which eventually alters the fracture behavior of the material and that is particularly relevant when we are talking about the service condition. So, we can determine the fracture toughness of a material from the lab scale by using even the plane strain plane stress concept. But when we uh, are using this material, this component in actual service, then we see that because of this uh, conditions like the presence of the notch or the change in the temperature or any alteration in the strain rate can actually lead to uh, enhancement in the yield strength, uh, but the overall toughness reduces. Okay. So, if that is the case, we need to figure that out uh, through some testing and there comes the, uh, the, the major factors that are uh, of concern for the case of impact testing. So, impact testing was first uh, uh, thought about by uh, Sharpie uh, long back in around 1912 and all when all those failure uh, things are happening, people came to know about the importance of the different factors that could have led to the failure and designed an experimental uh, way to find out the toughness of a material. So, the basic factors which uh, contribute to the brittle fracture as we have seen is the first of all the presence of this notch and because of the presence of the notch the stress triaxiality that occurs at the tip because at uh, in, in front of a notch there will be always some kind of plastic deformation and how much will be this plastic zone size that depends on several factors also depending on the material of choice apart from the design factors. But surrounding this plastic zone there will be an elastic part. This elastic part is supposed to constrain any kind of permanent deformation that the plastic part is supposed to have. So, that leads to a stress triaxiality and as a result the fracture behavior is being strongly affected. So, uh, for example, if we once again draw the stress strain curve and if this is one for a regular material, let us say a smooth specimen, if there is a notch, we can see that there is an enhancement in the L strength and reduction in the ductility of the material. Now, if we are increasing the notch severity, so if let us say this is a shallow notch, And if we are increasing the length of the notch or decreasing the uh, tip radius of the notch, we are seeing even further enhancement in the yield strength and reduction in ductility. So, this is for a deeper notch. So, that means that not only the presence of notch, but the geometry of the notch as well as the total size of the notch that is also very important to manipulate or to alter the overall fracture toughness of the material. And uh, apart from that as uh, we have seen that high strain rate has also some role to play 
and as well as low temperature. So, when uh, impact testing has been designed all these three factors are taken into consideration. So, that uh, uh, all, all, all this can be applied simultaneously and so that we can figure out the worst case scenario and the fracture toughness in that. And in actual practice maybe all the three uh, conditions may not be applicable at the same time and anyway whatever uh, toughness that we are determining based on the impact testing will give us a conservative value a lower bound value and in the actual service we are actually expecting better than better value than that provided all the three conditions do not act simultaneously. But if it does for this worst case scenario we are prepared to find out the toughness of the material based on the impact toughness testing. So, there are different methods uh, that uh, has been found out this one is the most commonly used test the Sharpie impact test. We typically use specimen like this which is a rectangular specimen and uh, which is having a central notch here or uh, the edge notch which is uh, positioned at the uh, center between the two loading points. So, this is uh, again like a single edge notch beam kind of specimen that we use for Sharpie test. Apart from that isod test is also very much used and uh, this isod test uh, the specimen is very similar to that used for Sharpie only in this case we place the specimen in a different way while in case of uh, Sharpie the load is applied from the back of the notch. The isod test the specimen is placed in a vertical way and this is how the load is impacted on the specimen. On the other hand there is an instrumented impact test this is once again more like the Sharpie test only. So, it is an instrumented Sharpie impact test and uh, the difference between a regular Sharpie test and an instrumented one is that in case of the instrumented one we can actually figure out the variation in the load with respect to time. So, this load versus time plot can also give us much more information about when this uh, deformation has actually started, what is the exact load at fracture, what is the total energy uh, for fracture and so on. So, uh, what is the amount of energy that is required for the crack propagation all this can be determined from the instrumented impact test. We get much detailed information compared to the Sharpie test. And uh, there is a drop weight test in which uh, uh, it, it looks like this. So, so, here is the specimen and then there is a weld on uh, beneath the specimen and uh, some weight is impacted from top. So, that a crack initiate from this part and that determines uh, that is typically done at different temperatures. So, to figure out that when at what particular temperature with the same amount of uh, weight and, and strain rate uh, what kind of temperature leads to the initiation of the crack. There is also dynamic tear test. So, dynamic tear test is also very similar to the uh, Sharpie test. Uh, this is the kind of specimen that is used, uh, but the only difference between the Sharpie test and the dynamic tear test uh, is that this uses a much larger specimen. Okay. This is uh, quite a large specimen you can see that uh, the total length is something like 455 millimeter. So, that is pretty high and uh, that leads to the toughness behavior can be determined from such test for the actual service condition. So, often we uh, when we are talking about using a kind of steel for ship building we often need to determine the toughness behavior under uh, such dimensional parameters also keeping those dimensions in mind. We have already seen uh, in the very initial lectures that how the different size or different volume of the actual component leads to much lesser value of the fracture strength right and that is related to several factors one being the uh, the probability related to the number of defects etc. So, it is always very very important particularly when we are uh, when we are talking about the brittle mode of failure the size or the volume of the component should be taken into account and that is particularly uh, taken care of when we use the dynamic tear test. And then there is Robertson crack arrest test also here uh, there is a specimen and there is a machined notch here and then it is impacted with a pendulum at a very high strain rate. Uh, there is a variation in the temperature uh, throughout the specimen so that we can figure out that what is the temperature uh, at which the crack 
propagation is being arrested. So, here also we can determine the particular temperature of interest or if we know that uh, the service temperature we can determine that what kind of strain rate uh, is suitable for uh, the crack to stop at that particular temperature. So, depending on the requirement service requirement we can design this experiment or we can utilize this uh, results. Okay. Now, since uh, the Sharpie uh, impact test is the mostly used one, we will start with this one and uh, slowly we will uh, get into the details of the other uh, impact toughness testing methods as well. So, coming to the Sharpie impact test, this is the kind of specimen that is particularly used here uh, and the specimen size and uh, all the different geometrical parameters has been standardized already. And this is the kind of specimen where we use the total length. So, let us say this thing is of something like 55 millimeters. So, it is a rectangular specimen, but with a square cross section. So, it has the size uh, of each of this side is 10 millimeter. Okay. And not only the specimen size but also the notch uh, which is machined here that is also being fully uh, standardized and uh, we typically use a V kind of notch with the notch root radius of 45 degree angle and the uh, root radius is around 0.25 millimeter. Okay. The notch depth is also very important as we have uh, seen that there could be some importance of the uh, notch depth also and this is particularly considered this depth is fixed based on the plane strain condition to be achieved. Uh, so, this uh, the standard depth that is used is around 2 millimeter. This uh, other than the V notch, U notch are also sometimes used or, used or keyhole kind of notch depending on the service requirement if such is the case of the notch then often uh, U notch or a keyhole notch are used where uh, the depth is around 5 millimeter and the notch root radius is a little bit higher of 1 millimeter. Okay. So, uh, the typical conditions as we mentioned that are used uh, for the Sharpie impact test are the following. When we design the specimen, this uh, following points are taken care of. So, first of all there should be a plane strain loading condition. Once again we want to determine the uh, materials properties. So, we want to have the plane strain condition maintained there and that is how uh, the notch depth or the thickness of the specimen or the other dimensions are the width of the specimen all are been uh, considered to achieve the plane strain loading condition. And uh, also because of this notch uh, and the notch length and all that uh, this triaxiality at the notch tip as we just discussed that is also being mentioned. So, uh, so that all kind of restriction is there and that leads to the lowest value of fracture toughness. So, that uh, are being considered while designing the Sharpie impact testing. Of course, these are standardized and all this can be found from the standard handbooks. Most importantly, so far we were talking about the specimen design and uh, we have mentioned about the strain rate. Uh, higher strain rate leads to higher yield strength as we have seen from this stress strain diagram itself. So, if this is for a regular specimen, if we are increasing the strain rate, then the yield strength is increasing of course, but the ductility is also reducing. So, this is let us say sigma yield strength we can see that there is an enhancement in the yield strength uh, with the enhancement in the strain rate. But so far we have not specified that what is the strain rate of concern. In this case for the case of uh, Sharpie impact test we typically use a strain rate of around 10 to the power 3 per second. Okay? So, 1000 per second strain rate is a dimensionless uh, parameter no dimension of length is there just the time dimension is there and uh, time unit is there and uh, what is important here to also appreciate the fact that what is the regular strain rate that is used for any other test. For example, if we are talking about a uh, 3 point bend test which is very similar to the we use very similar kind of specimen for fracture toughness testing through uh, ACNB specimen that we have seen in the last lecture. 
but the strain rate that are typically used for the tensile testing in the mode 1 fracture condition is something uh, let me just write it down here. So, normal uh, monotonic testing now this could be also applicable for tensile testing or uh, fracture toughness testing when we are increasing the load monotonically also known as static or quasi static testing let me that is a more appropriate term would be quasi static testing. So, for that typical strain rate is something like 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 4 per second. Okay. So, in comparison to that for the case of impact toughness testing we are increasing the strain rate by almost 10 to the power of uh, by, by 6 or 7 orders of magnitude. So, strain rate increases by 6 to 7 orders of magnitude. So, that is of course, a huge enhancement and any uh, such effect of strain rate will be completely pronounced in this case and we can figure out the influence of the strain rate in there. Okay. So, let us see how the Sharpie impact test is typically done. So, what uh, we have here is a dial and with this is a pendulum or a, a hammer. So, this is the base of the uh, instrument in which the specimen is being kept. Now, this hammer hits the specimen like this okay, actually the specimen and then it stops after certain distance. The uh, specimen flies off, it breaks or it gets deformed okay. and uh, in turn we are able to figure out the change in the position of the pendulum from the. So, this was the starting position let us say this as H 1, let us name this uh, dial as D, the hammer or the pendulum as H or uh, sometimes uh, like this carries a particular amount of weight and this is being impacted with certain velocity as I mentioned the velocity is something like uh, 10 to the power 3 per second. And then after it hits the sample uh, the energy of this pendulum uh, the potential energy of this pendulum is being absorbed by the sample by the specimen and then with this absorbed energy there is some amount of deformation in the specimen. And since the pendulum or the hammer has lost this energy because the specimen has absorbed it, it did not reach the same height as the starting one. So, it uh, stopped at a lower height than that. So, that let us say from the base that height is termed as H 2. So, in this case the total energy that the pendulum was uh, carrying the potential energy let us name this as E 1. So, E 1 is the m, m is the mass right the typical uh, relation for energy is m g, g is the acceleration due to gravity ok and h 1. So, that is the height of the pendulum ok. On the other hand for the condition E 2 we have similarly m g and h 2. Okay. So, uh, this is essentially what is being uh, used the concept of the Sharpie impact test which means that the energy that is being absorbed by the specimen is computed from the difference in this energy. So, overall what we see delta E here is or eventually we end up finding out this energy or the difference in energy which is given by 
mg h1 minus h2 and this is termed as the impact energy. This delta E is actually what is known as the impact energy. Okay. So, here uh, is the, the machine and how it looks like. So, this is the dial in which records the position of the H at the initial case as well as once it hits the specimen, the specimen is kept like this. So, that the hammer typically hits from this direction just directly opposite to the notch tip here and as a result the specimen absorbs the energy and gets deformed. So, here is a small uh, video just to show how the impact tests are being done. So, this is how the specimen is placed and then the hammer is released, it hits the specimen and the dial comes to certain position and the specimen gets deformed. So, this is uh, how from the, uh, the defo uh, deformation of the specimen we can determine that what kind of fracture has happened, whether the fracture has happened or not at the first place and if ha has it been then what is the typical mode. If there is no fracture then uh, what kind of deformation has happened. We can all figure this out from the specimen itself and uh, from the record of the dial we can determine the exact energy, we can quantify this and we can correlate this deformation with the energy required and we can get the information about the toughness of the material from there. Okay, so, let us come to the conclusion of this lecture. This is what we have discussed over this lecture is that uh, low temperature, high strain rate as well as the high triaxial stress because of the presence of a notch, all these external conditions lead to uh, inhibition in the plastic flow of the material and that particularly promotes brittle and the cleavage kind of fracture. So, to find out the property of a material under such condition impact toughness test is determined and that is a dynamic test which is carried out on notched specimen. It is also known as the notched bar impact test. The impact blow is generally applied at a very high strain rate by means of either swinging pendulum that we have uh, seen for the case of Sharpie test or it could be a dropping weight as well. Basically, impact test is determined at the worst possible condition such that all the uh, inhibiting conditions such as high strain rate, uh, high triaxial tensile stress because of the presence of the notch as well as low temperature, all these three factors are acted simultaneously and the toughness is determined on that basis. The most common impact testing methods are however, Sharpie and the Izod impact test. So, these are the references used for this lecture. Thank you very much.